Good afternoon, brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and please turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along in the scriptures as we go through this. And unto my beloved brother, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. Thank you for the rebuke and correction, dear brother. We're getting to that. So, please follow me along in the scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 on to verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 on to verse 7. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, carnal, carne, fleshly, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled, do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trust to himself that he is Christ's, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ's, even so are we Christ's. Look at verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12 on to verse 17. Ephesians 6, verses 12 on to verse 17. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, carne, carnal, fleshly, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. For our weapons are not carnal but mighty, to the pulling down of strongholds, right? What is our weapon? The authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
Satan and his church, Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, and her army, the Jesuit order. These are whom we are warring against. Okay? But note a contrast here. Go to Matthew chapter 16, just one verse, okay? Verse 12 here, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, okay? Go to Matthew chapter 16. One, one verse. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. But he turned, meaning Jesus, and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Fleshly. Okay? Fleshly. Things that be of men. Puffing up the spirit. Uh, the flesh. Okay? Satan is all about flesh. Satan is all about gratification of flesh. Puffing up flesh. Where we as the church of the living God are instructed through the scriptures to mortify to put down our flesh. Where Satan, as on the other hand, lifts it up, elevates it, dresses it up and makes it look all pretty. Okay? Go to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, verses 14 on to verse 16. Luke chapter 16, verses 14 on to verse 16. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. And, and, and what does Satan... Hmm? And what does Satan value? <laughs> Verse 23 in Matthew 16. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Back to Luke chapter 16. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. A Pharisee, for us, uh, our, you know, for us today, a Pharisee is someone who takes tradition and elevates that over the scripture, which is exactly what Roman Catholicism does. Scripture is not as high as tradition onto the Catholic, okay? Tradition is up here, scripture is down here, okay? That is a Pharisee. Let's continue. Let's continue. Verse 15 in, Matthew, in Luke chapter 16. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time the kingdom of God is preached and every man presseth into it. Presseth into it. Trying to force their way into it. Okay? And then of course go to John chapter 5 John chapter 5 one verse verse 44 John 5 verse 44 
how can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? See, while in the scriptures, like I said, we are commanded to mortify, put down our flesh, to not live in or through our flesh, but to live by the Spirit. But see, religion, religion today, is all about the elevation of the flesh. What you do, okay? Elevating your flesh, gathering people together in unscriptural church buildings, giving them, what is it, contemporary Christian music to get the flesh going, right? Right? And then they give you sermons in these church buildings, right? That, again, puff up the flesh. That's satanic. Okay. Now go back to First Corinth, uh, Second Corinthians, chapter ten. Okay. Second Corinthians, chapter ten. Look at verse seven. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trust to himself that he is Christ's. Let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ's, even so are we Christ's. The outward appearance. The outward appearance. Okay? Go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. Chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. One verse. One verse in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. Uh, let's read verses 6 and 7. Beg your pardon. And it came to pass when they were come, that he looked on Iliad, this is Samuel, and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. On the heart. And remember, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. It is a heart issue. And there are those out there who can disguise their heart under the vein of religion. No, you don't say, huh? Go to James chapter 2 now. James chapter 2. James chapter 2. James chapter 2, verses 1 on 2, verse 13 in James chapter 2. Now you have to remember about the book of James. The book of James is the time of Jacob's trouble epistle. Okay. This, the book of James, is addressed unto who? The twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. The very first verse in James chapter 1. Okay? This is written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? You have to remember that. Always keep that in mind when looking in the book of James. A lot of instruction in righteousness, doctrinally. Okay? There are things that cross dispensational lines, yes. But doctrinally, the book of James is primarily for the time of Jacob's trouble, for the Jews thereof during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? But let's continue. James chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 13. My brethren, 
Have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons? For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. By the way, gay means happy, okay? Not as it has been twisted in meaning to mean what it is being used for today, okay? Keep that in mind. Let's continue. Verse 4. Are ye not, are ye not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? Whoa, whoa, okay. Hearken, my beloved brethren. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Playing into the time of Jacob's trouble this verse because they're going to have the mark of the beast being able to buy and sell. They're going to be rich. Those who uh, will not take the mark of the beast, that kind of thing. Okay. Verse 7. Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend at one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, Do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. And what did we have here? To 13. For he, oh, so speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath shewed no mercy. For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath shewed no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Because our Lord would rather be merciful. Okay? He would much rather. He delighteth in mercy. But God is a God judgment okay so now we read these things of what we have looked at so far about being you know having respect of persons and not looking on the outward appearance and that kind of stuff like that we're going to as the title of this video um, religion today religion today is just that a fair shoe in the flesh. That is all it is. Okay? The word religion appears five times within the authorized version of the scripture. Five. The number of death. Okay? And, why are, and whereas the religion of our Lord is something entirely different than the religion that is being promulgated by Mystery Babylon... Uh, Roman Catholicism and her army, the Jesuit order, through all their front organizations and stuff like that, okay? Religion, religion as based on the world's standard, religion as based upon man. And remember, Satan savorous the things of man, not the things that be of God. To puff up and elevate man, okay? Ye shall be as gods, 
knowing good and evil, remember. Okay? So, go now to Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. One verse. Okay? We are going to look at every single uh, occurrence of the word religion. Now, a lot of people will be tempted to go to Webster's 1828 uh, dictionary to define what religion means. I am for, I, I use the 1828 uh, Webster's Dictionary myself. I recommend it. I use it. Yes. But what I personally like to do, I like to have the scriptures define the word. To seek the scriptures first. So, Acts chapter 26, verse 5. Here is the first occurrence of the word religion in the scriptures. All of them appear within the New Testament. Okay? Very interesting to note. Uh, let's see. Why don't we begin at verse 1 on to verse 5 in Acts chapter 26. Okay? Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day, bef day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, right here, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. A Pharisee. Okay? And a Pharisee for us today, even back, <laughs> and we will see this, okay? A Pharisee is someone, again, tradition, scripture, Roman Catholic. Okay? Roman Catholic. But when you see the word religion here in verse 5, Okay? Look onto what it is attributed to. Okay? The most straightest sect of our religion are the Jews. Religion. Straightest. Most disciplined. Okay? Most strict sect of our religion. I lived a Pharisee. Pharisee. Tradition, scripture, okay? Tradition is up here, scripture is down here, all right? Okay? Go to Philippians. Go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 11. Okay? Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 11. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we, the church of the living God, are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Now think about this. 
as regarding to the Catholic and also to the Hasidim in Israel. Their flesh is well ordered flesh, very disciplined, very regimented, very controlled, yes, but nevertheless, Catholicism and Orthodox Judaism of today, not the one founded, uh, found in Scripture, okay? Both of them are very similar, by the way. The Kabbalistic Judaism and Roman Catholicism of today, they're very, very similar, okay? Very similar. But doth not the Catholic rejoice in the flesh? Of course they do. The perfectly round sun-shaped bale cookie that they take. And of course they drink the wine which the Catholic Jesuit priest has the ability to go woody 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 and turn it into the blood and flesh of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And see we, the Church of the Living God, have no confidence in the flesh. Whereas the Catholic, the coadjutor, okay, that's all their confidence is in, the flesh. You're all about flesh. That's all you're about. Because that's all you have. This is your reward. Flesh is your reward. Verse 4. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, Paul speaking, of course, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. Concerning zeal, <laughs> persecuting the church, which every single devil, coadjutor, Roman Catholic, Jesuit, coadjutor, that's all they do, is they persecute the church, the church of the living God, the body of Christ, those who are saved, born again, and converted. Okay? That's all they do. Their zeal is driven of flesh, not of the Spirit of God, because they have not the Spirit of God. See? It's all about the flesh. Verse 6 again. Concerning zeal persecuting the church, Touching the righteousness, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Remember, Paul was brought up at the feet of Gamaliel. Paul could have probably become the next high priest. Okay? If Paul would have remained in his religion, handed to him by his, the elders, the fathers, okay? Who knows where Paul would have gone? But see, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, had a different plan for him. Totally. Let's continue. Verse 8. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. And that doesn't mean that he's winning him as he's gaining his own salvation. Okay? What this means is the Lord got a hold of him, and he now knows the Lord, and wants to follow him according to his not his own, but to the Lord's standard. See? So the standards that come from man, but done. The standards that uplift the flesh. See? Let's continue. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, my own righteousness, which is of the law. Ask a Catholic, are you saved? They can't answer that honestly. 
Why? Because that's the sin of presumption, to presume that you are saved. Because they have to continually eat their God and drink his blood. They have to die in a state of grace. They don't know. They don't know. So, well, I went to Mass today. I took Eucharist. I did penance. <laughs> I tithe. Okay, I do this, this, and this. See, boasting of fleshly things. See. Verse 9. But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings be made conformable unto his death, dying to the world, dying to self and flesh. Okay? If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Now that does not mean that he's working to uh, gain that. Okay? That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about purification. Okay? That's what he's talking about. Not that you have to work to gain the resurrection. If you come to him on his terms, broken and contrite, and in the fear of the Lord, call out unto our Lord Jesus Christ for his mercy, and he save you, you are sealed, eternally secure. Once saved, always saved. You're going to heaven, okay? That is established. Purity. Removing the things that get in the way of your walk with the Lord. That's what he's talking about. Now go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. Chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 17. Not the second epistle, Brad. <laughs> 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 17. Okay? This is the religion that we uh, Paul is talking about in Acts chapter 26, verses 1 up to verse 5. Okay, we're looking at it. Okay, First Timothy chapter one, verses twelve on to verse seventeen. Paul speaking, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer, and a persecutor and injurious but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly not knowing better in unbelief and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus this is a faithful saint and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering, not patience, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen and amen. Okay? Now go back to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. He did it ignorantly in unbelief. He was zealous. He was zealous of the laws, of the uh, traditions of the elders, and stuff like that. Acts chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 3. Okay? Here's, here's a look at Paul's zeal before the Lord got a hold of him. Okay? Here's a look at Paul's zeal. Acts chapter 8, 
verses 1 on to verse 3. And Saul was consenting unto his death, Stephen's death. And at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial, and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, who would become Paul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women, committed them to prison, where ultimately a bunch of them would be executed. Okay? That's his zeal. He made havoc of the church. Because he had confidence in the flesh. He was religious. And in his zeal, he was persecuting the church, the church of the living God, inaccurately referred to as Christians. Okay? And hence, the zeal of these devils, these Jesuit coadjutors, constantly attacking the church of the living God, the body of Christ. That's all they do in their zeal to serve their father, the devil. And see, at this time, Paul was not converted. He wasn't saved, no way. But see, he was religious. Very religious. Very religious. Go to Acts chapter 9. Verses 1 and 2. Acts chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound onto Jerusalem. Give me letters. I'm going to go after them. Bring them to Jerusalem to be have them put into prison to ultimately be put to death. Okay. Okay. That's Paul's religion. That was the religion that he was practicing, given to him. Okay? Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Verses 13 and 14. Galatians chapter 1. Verses 13 and 14. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion. And we have already looked at the basis of the religion that Paul was exercising, that he was living, okay? For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion. How that beyond measure I persecuted the Christians. No, I persecuted the church of God and wasted it and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. Traditions. Traditions of my fathers. So, being exceeding zealous of the traditions of my fathers. Very, very similar unto the Roman Catholic and the Jesuit. Their traditions are here. The scriptures are down here. And they will fight you, shame you, slander you, kill you, in order to keep their traditions. Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. Mark 
Mark chapter 7. The traditions. Let's take a look at this. Mark chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 23. Then came together, Mark chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 23. Then came together unto him the Pharisees, and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashen hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. Trying to achieve spiritual things through fleshly, carnal acts is vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. All is vanity. Let's continue. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be, which they have received to hold, as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. Which, if you've ever uh, worked in a kosher restaurant in the morning, a rabbi comes and says what he says, and then they take water and they throw it onto the tables and purify everything, okay? Very interesting to actually see. Let's continue. Verse 5. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, meaning Jesus, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashen hands? He answered and said unto them, well hath Isaiah, Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites. As it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Oh, they sure can talk a good game. But their heart is not with the Lord. He doesn't know them as to a relationship. Let's continue. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men, Catholics. Because remember, Satan savoreth not the things, or savoreth not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. Let's continue. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Is that not what the Catholic, the Jesuit, does? Is that not what the people in the church building system do? Okay? They reject the commandment of God that they may keep their own tradition, the building. Their little religious ceremonies. Let's continue. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say... If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corban. What does that mean? That is to say, a gift. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition that ye which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. 
There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaketh. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house from and when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable, and he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him? because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the draught, purging all meats. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, I yeah. Adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride. Foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. You can hide pretty well. Sooner or later, they trip up. They always do. And they expose themselves for what they really are. Now go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry celibacy, and commanding to abstain from meats, veganism, vegetarianism, and or Lent. This incorporates just more than Roman Catholicism, but then again, you got to remember, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay? Keep that in mind. Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained but refuse <laughs> but refuse profane and old wives fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness what is godliness 
Fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. You live your life according to the scriptures. Having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. How do you learn godliness? Through the scriptures. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Verse 9. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach. Because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, self-sacrifice, in spirit, in faith, in Purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading. What is he reading? The scriptures. To exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands by the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Don't sit on the fence. Don't try to uh, live one way and another. Okay? Choose a side. Don't be carnal. Okay? Give yourself wholly unto the Lord. Live according to the scriptures. Don't try to walk both sides. Don't try to have your cake and eat it too. Okay? You can't be a friend of the world and be right with God. You're either or. There is no middle ground. Pick a side. <laughs> at least, at the very least, these wicked coadjutor devils they have already chosen their side the side of Satan who is all about the flesh but what about some of you hmm? verse 16 take heed unto thyself by adhering to what he has already said and unto the doctrine continue in them for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Not that he's saving himself as far as eternal, but how he lives by example. Okay? See, don't neglect the doctrine. Do not neglect the scriptures. Live according to the scriptures. That your life resemble the scriptures. Being an example. See. But see, religion today has nothing to do with the scriptures. It's all a fair shoe of the flesh. Okay? That's all it is. Now go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We have to touch this. Verses 1 on to verse 7. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. I say are here. What about you? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Carnal, fleshly, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, 
without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, can't hold water, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of God, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away, denying the power thereof. You know, when a man has an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, something's going to change. Okay? When you encounter the Lord, when he encounters you and reproves you, rebukes you, that's something that you don't get over. Things change, okay? But there are those out there having a form of godliness, religion. Adhering to step one, step two. Are you saved, brother? Adhering to the commandments and doctrines of men. But denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, laden with sins, led away with divers lusts. Because remember, who did Satan go after first in the Garden of Eden? Eve. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Hence, every single one of these devil, Roman Catholic, Jesuit coadjutors, and all these people who are in the church buildings, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Because they're still of the world. They're not regenerate. See? Okay? Hence, that is the type of religion. That is the type of religion that is being promulgated today. But now, okay, but now, let's go to James. James, back to the book of James, chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. James chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Look at verse 26. Looking at verse 26. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 on to verse 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Whose end shall be according to their works. 
And note in verse 26 in James chapter 1, If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, bridleth not his tongue, what does that mean? Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Very familiar verses. Ought to be. Isaiah chapter 30 verses 9 on to verse 11. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Okay? Now, go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Bridleth not his tongue. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 4. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Be ready. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and feelings. Doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on to fables. Hmm. Hmm. Psalm 55, bridleth not their tongue. If someone seems to be religious and bridleth not their tongue. Hmm? Psalm 55, one verse. Psalm 55, verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Hmm. Really? Really? Okay? Okay? Now go to Romans. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. Verses 17 on to verse 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such, for they that are such, serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, all about the flesh. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. You know, talking very softly, very smoothly, on the surface, never raising their voice, never having any passion. They're so innocent. They're so smooth. They're so sweet. But inwardly, inwardly, yeah, 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 and that's something, huh? 
Now, and also too, while we're here, let us also remember Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. After the rudiments of this of the world, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Now people like to say, well, Paul talks about traditions in Second Thessalonians, but those are after Christ. The traditions that he is rebuking are the traditions of men. Hence. Catholicism. Hence, church building Christianity. The traditions of men. Satan is all about the flesh, remember. He savoreth not the things that be of God, but the things that be of man. If Satan can elevate man to think that he himself is his own God, hence he has won something for the time being temporary victory, not a permanent one. And these people in these church buildings and these devil coadjutors, it's all about the flesh to them. Using fair words and speeches, smooth words. They're so, so righteous, so pious, aren't they? The religion is in vain, dear people. The religion is in vain. Now go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. Verses 14 on to verse 19. Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Basor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity the dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, incontinent. Clouds that are carried about, clouds that are carried with the tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever, their ultimate end. For when they speak. Great swelling words of vanity. <laughs> Just believe. Repentance is going from unbelief to unbelief. See, changing the name of the condition to change, and it changes the condi condition, euphemistic language. Changing the definition of words. That's just what. What they do. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promised them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. You read Romans chapter 6 on your own time for further explanation on that. See, okay? Now, Jude. Go to Jude. Let's Let's beat this horse a little. Jude verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares, 
who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Oh, God's grace covers everything. That's why in the church building system, okay, they teach you to be as the world, to win the world, because God's grace covers everything. See, we are to be separate, not to be as the world. And these church building people and their religion teaches you to be as the world. See, they teach a love that doesn't rebuke or put the finger on sin. See, no, love to them is not saying anything. Love to them is not judging anything, but accepting sin as the norm. Someone loves you, they tell you your sin. <laughs> Don't you, brother? Yes, yes. If someone loves you, they're going to tell you your sin. You hate someone? Shh. Don't warn them. Don't say anything. And that's exactly what the religion of today is promulgating. The religion of the son of perdition. Do you see? Turning the grace of our, of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. One and the same. Okay? Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Now in Jude verses 11 on to verse 16. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feasts of charity, self-sacrifice. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, no fear of the Lord. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, Trees whose free fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, ain't ya? Yeah, yeah. Wandering stars, her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Wandering? Hmm. To whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And in the book of Enoch also. <laughs> no, it doesn't say that, does it? No. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, look at that, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. They tell you what you want to hear, what not what you need to hear. Look at the people that come from the church buildings that practice the religion of the son of perdition. Okay? A religion of flesh. That won't tell you the truth, but will tickle your ear. It's your ear. Speak unto you smooth things. That's religion for you today, people. That's religion for you today. And amen. Amen. I myself am against religion, the religion of men. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Because, now go to John chapter 15. 
John chapter 15. Okay? John chapter 15. See, religion today is taught by the precept of men. But the religion that comes from our Lord is something totally different. Okay? Something totally different. John chapter 15, verses 18 on to verse 27. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Here's what we, as the Church of the Living God, as given as for our instruction and in righteousness, our example given here. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also, because Jesus is the Father. But see, look at verse 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. See, we as the church of the living God are to shew love unto the lost by telling them, hey, your sin is going to take you to hell because you have sinned against the Lord. Okay? We, out of love, tell the sinner, make the sinner aware of their sin and tell them the truth of the gospel and point them to Christ through the scriptures. But see, you want to practice religion today? Actual hate? God loves you. God, God's not mad at you. You see? Or, even better, put on you a whole list of unscriptural steps and methods. The precepts of men. Like Catholics do. Like the people in the church buildings do. And all the church buildings were overtaken by the Jesuit order in 1984 because they gave a sign onto the rest of the Jesuits all across the world when an American president, Ronald Reagan, took his, uh, his oath of office standing in front of an obelisk. Okay? Let's continue. From verse 24. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my Father. Because Jesus Christ is the Father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. And of course, John chapter 16, verses 12 and 15, on to 15. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and 
shall shew it unto you. Spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, the Holy Ghost, soul, the Father, the body, the Word made flesh. One God, spirit, soul, and body. Jesus is the Father, see? Okay? That's what that means. You who are saved of the church of the living God, sealed, converted, you have the Lord living within you, and he will guide you into all truth. We know this of the church of the living God. Okay? This we know already. We know this already. Do we not? But then again, going back to James chapter 1, okay, go back to James chapter 1, verse 26. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. Speaking smooth things. Speaking to uplift flesh, not to mortify flesh. Having men's persons in view because of advantage. See, if any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, watching what you say, speaking the truth from the scriptures, not seeking to please man or to uplift the flesh. You see? Go to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, one verse. Matthew chapter 12, one verse. Verse 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Now granted, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? But our instruction in righteousness is what? Okay? Ye shall know them by their fruits. How do, how does a dragon, how does a devil speak? See, Hollywood tells you that a devil speaks in um, cursing and all these other things. No. A devil speaks smooth things. Okay? You, you, uh, when a devil exposes himself underneath the surface in his heart, yes, his heart is filled with cursing, bitterness, yes. But on the surface, it's very smooth, very ordered, very soft. Very soft, very smooth. Oh, you're so pious. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. One verse again. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Verse 3. Ah, let's actually read verses 1 under verse 3 in Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. Fool has said in his heart, there is no God. For they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore let thy words be few. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. Mm. For they think they will be heard for their much speaking. Hmm. Very interesting, huh? And of course, go to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10. One verse again, verse 19. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin. 
But he that refraineth his lips is wise. See, a fool is known by the multitude of words. And in the multitude of words there is not sin. But no, someone who says in his heart there is no God. Perfect example. You look into a Catholic Bible, all the study notes that they have, trying to explain away the scriptures, especially when it comes to the book of Revelation. Perfect example of that. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. Who is wise? Someone who fears the Lord. And of course, go back to Ephesians now, chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 on to verse 32. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay? Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So when we as the church of the living God speak one to another, it is to be for edifying. But when it comes to the loss, okay, we are to use the, uh, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We are to tell the lost the truth and not hold back because we are concerned about their feelings. And one with another, okay, the longer you walk with the Lord, the more you appreciate a rebuke. <laughs> okay? Okay? But now go to Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. I want to show you this. Isaiah chapter 59. Okay? Hold your place in Isaiah 59. Look at James chapter 1, verse 26 and 27 again. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. You can say all you want, but does the talk match the walk? Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Okay? Isaiah chapter 50, uh, 59, verses 1 under verse 14. Okay? Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. Hi. Hi, you. Yeah. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Yeah, anyone following the people in the church buildings 
or these devil coadjutors. Hmm. He that eateth of their eggs dieth. Hmm. Their webs shall not become garments. Their webs shall not become garments. Neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Yeah. Their works are works of iniquity. And the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not. And there is no judgment in their goings. Peace. Shalom. Are you constantly aggravated over someone you don't like and it, it rules your life? Hmm? Not letting go and letting God? Hmm? No peace? Hmm. And there is no judgment in their goings? They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Therefore is judgment far from us. Neither doth justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity. For darkness. Uh, oh wait. Therefore is judgment far from us. Neither doth justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind. And we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. Perfect description of the religious lost dead coadjutor. Perfect description. They think they're in light. We roar all like bears and mourn like doves. We roar all like bears and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. You know what your sins are and your, and your transgressions and iniquities are. But also the knowing there as through a relationship. You know your sin. You have a relationship with your sin. Your flesh. Hence, your father the devil. Also, this is really uh, pointing to those who have crossed a line that can't come back. They know it, but what can they do? In transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. Hi, you. Hi. Yeah. You devil coadjutors. You religious Christians. Yeah. And judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and iniquity cannot enter. Verse 26 in James chapter, James chapter 1. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. Verses 1 on to verse 14 in Isaiah chapter 59. Clear, clearly defined. Verse 26 in James chapter 1. Okay? But now, verse 27 in James chapter 1. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction 
and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Isaiah 59, verses 15 on to verse 21 now. See how we did this? Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw, it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. And he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness, it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate, and an helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing, and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord keep one unspotted, to keep one's self unspotted from the world. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. While we're here, go to Isaiah chapter 58 now. Okay? Check this out. Okay, now let's refresh our memory about verse 27 in James chapter 1. In James chapter 1 place out there. Verse 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Isaiah chapter 8, uh, 58. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and shew my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Hence, we of the church of the living God, out there as ambassadors of Christ, ministers of reconciliation, having the word of reconciliation, and shew my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. To shew forth the love of Christ. One thing thou lackest. Okay? We are to shew the lost their sin. Having mercy on them, you know, not taking the scriptures and bashing them over the head. No. We are to do it gently. Yes. But nonetheless, we are to tell them the lost of their condition and their need for a Savior. The Savior. Whereas religion, you're okay. Let me tell you what you can do to make yourself right with the Lord. Where we as a church of the living God, let me tell you what the Lord wants to do for you. But see, you have to come to him his way, not your own. And when you tell the lost of that, if they are truly seeking, if their heart is ready, if they are broken, they'll get it. But if they're going to be obstinate, they are so worn. Let's continue. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Religious people. 
you know, the religious, religious people of this world who are practicing the religion of the son of perdition. Check this out. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife, and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. For all their works they do to be seen of men. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. For they, will, they think they will be heard for their much speaking. A fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. If they bridleth not their tongue, their religion is in vain. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not, is not this the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness, to not be spotted by the world, to keep himself unspotted from the world, to undo heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, feeding people. And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, self-sacrifice, charity. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee, if thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity, and if thou draw out, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. Self-sacrifice, charity. Oh, don't worry, we're going to see the equivalent for us today. Don't worry about that, we'll get that. We'll get there. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and shall satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. For out of your belly shall proceed living waters. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt rise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. You know, living by the old paths, going by the old ways. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, again, we have to remember, doctrinally, dispensationally, what we are written, reading right now is written on to the Jews in a different dispensation. This is for our instruction in righteousness, as you haven't figured that out. Let's continue. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, and incidentally, we don't have to keep the Sabbath today, to be right with God, stay saved or be saved. Okay? Sabbath was a sign for the Jews. 
don't have to keep it today to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? Let's continue. From doing thy pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, self-sacrifice, charity. Giving yourself wholly unto them. What? The doctrine. The words. Giving yourself wholly unto who? The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Verse 14. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Of course, of course we had to come here. See, true religion, true religion as founded in the scriptures is self-sacrifice, putting the Lord first in all things, while the religion of this world is to elevate your flesh so you look good, so you are earning something in the sight of God. While the religion given to us of the Lord is Him first. Dying to self. Dying to flesh. Whereas the religion of this world, the religion preached today by these coadjutors and the Christians in the buildings. It's all about flesh. It's all about the flesh. Because, oh, I just have my place there. Sorry. Verse 27 in James chapter 1. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction putting others before yourself, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Charity. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and, and of angels, and have not charity, self-sacrifice, not love, you can love all the wrong things. You can mistake lust for love. Charity is self-sacrifice. I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity. I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. See, the religion of today tell you to do this, but they replace charity with love. What is the love that you're exuding, that you're demonstrating? A love of your own self. Look at how pious and righteous you are by doing all these good things. When of charity, putting the Lord first and dying to yourself, see. Hence, that is what 1 Corinthians 13 is talking about. And see, you take out charity and put love there. Love of your own self. Where charity is death to yourself. Let's keep reading. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. And someone who mistakes love for lust 
love this world, love the praises of men. Exhibit every single one of those. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. And these devils who are all, are all about the flesh, they're actually quite easily provoked while maintaining a demeanor of, you know, smoothness, quietness, speaking like devils. Remember again, brethren, a devil doesn't speak outwardly, openly, and cursing, and bitterness, and all that stuff. No, their facade is one of gentleness, instruction, and uh, instructors of righteousness, ministers of righteousness, excuse me, excuse me for that. Okay? And that's not just in the church buildings, again, okay, that branches off Oprah. She's a minister of, of, of righteousness, isn't she? Oprah Winfrey. Joel Osteen. Don't worry, he's a Christian, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth. All these flesh-loving devils, they don't love truth. They don't. They rejoice in iniquity. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. Sacrificing, self-sacrifice because you love the Lord. Not because you have to. Not grudgingly. Because God loveth a cheerful giver. Remember. Okay? Charity, self-sacrifice. Never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. When you became aware. Okay? When you're a child, not knowing better, but when you become aware, you know better. You put away childish things. Childhood and youth are vanity. Okay? For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also, but then shall I know even as also I am known. No. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity, self-sacrifice. Okay, and looking in James again, verse 27, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. There is a religion of flesh and of man, of this world, the devil, mystery Babylon the great, the mother of harlots, abominations, uh, the mother of abominations of the earth and her church, Roman Catholicism and her army, the Jesuit order and all her coadjutors. Okay? There's the religion of the son of perdition. Then there is the religion of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Romans chapter 12. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, 
holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I don't care if we've gone through this uh, a lot of times. I don't care. We have to have a war against religion. The religion of this world. Because, amen, the religion of this world is evil. It's satanic. Yes. But the religion that is of Scripture is one of charity, self-sacrifice, putting others before yourself. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, separate, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Who are you proving it to? to those whom you will encounter as ministers of reconciliation, as ambassadors, having the word of reconciliation. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, and doth not the religion of today make people think that of themselves. Think about that. You go to church, you tithe, huh? You've been baptized. You've been confirmed. Yeah. 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 Thinking a little bit more highly of yourself than you ought to think? Oh, even better. You just believe. But yet, there's no change. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, there is a change. You've gotten worse. Haven't you? Oh, but you're so pious and so righteous, aren't you? <laughs> but to think soberly, according as God, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love amongst the church of the living God, the body of Christ, be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Extreme hate that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Self-sacrifice, charity, putting the Lord first. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, Continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of saints. Given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Curse not. Go, don't go down to their level. Tell them the truth of their lost condition. But then again there are some that are gone and can't come back. They have gone past that point of no return. They're going to hell. Okay? Those are the dogs that bark. That are gone. They cannot go back. They have, they're lost. They cannot, they cannot be saved. Not that the Lord can't save them. But they have gone past the point of no return. 
they have made their choice. See. Those, it's not much you can do for them or with them. Just avoid them. <laughs> Pity them. But others, you bless them by sharing the truth. See, to shew the love of Christ unto the lost world, you tell them the truth. You make them aware of their sin through the scriptures, through the Holy Ghost that dwells within you, and the Lord is that spirit. But see, the religion of the anti... The religion of the son of perdition! Ha, 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 ha. Judges nothing. Loves the sin. Doesn't scare people. It's just their ears. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them with that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things. Oh, like uh, religiosity. You've done this, 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 and this. Therefore, that means that you're a Christian because you've done the requirements given to you by man. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. And that is exactly what religion does for you. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Why is that? Because you're a minister of reconciliation. You're being watched. Live your life according to the scriptures. You don't know who's watching you and who will be, uh, who's, who's your testimony by the way you behave. Who, know, who knows how the Lord is going to use that? If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, Give him drink, for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. You want a good definition of what pure religion is for us today in this dispensation. But now, go to Matthew chapter 23. We're almost done. Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. Now we got to remember, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Doctrinally, dispensationally, still under the law. He was still offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people. But see, Matthew chapter 23 is referring to the state of things before the time of Jacob's trouble. Because Matthew chapter 24 is about the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, So, Matthew chapter 23. And remember, a Pharisee is someone who holds tradition of men above what God says. And the traditions that Paul shared onto the churches that are mentioned in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3, verse 15 and 6. Those traditions are not after the rudiments of the world, but are after Christ. Matthew chapter 23. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, 
the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. What I do here on YouTube through these videos, what the Lord gives me, okay, what the Lord does through me, okay, I put it into practice out there, okay? I tell you to live by the scriptures. We live by the scriptures, okay? For example, when you leave your house, no matter where you go, Always go armed. Always take a sword with you. Be instant in season, out of season. Okay? See, a Pharisee, someone who is religious, will tell you, but do not. They can preach truth to you, but do they live that truth? For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Will you? No. But all their works they do, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylactic trees and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feast and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master. That's what rabbi means. Even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call, call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your capital F, Father, which is in heaven. And our dear brother Alexander Hartley did a wonderful video in the appropriate context on this very verse. So... I'm going to, if I can remember, link it in this video. Okay. Verse 10. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Go down to men of low esteem, uh, low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Humble yourselves. Self-sacrifice. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Kingdom of heaven, actual physical, literal kingdom of heaven that is located in Jerusalem when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, will come back and rule and reign from 4,000 years. Okay? An actual physical kingdom. That's what that means. But let's continue. For ye neither, your, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Misery loves company. These fakes, these religious coadjutors, they ain't saved. They're not going in, they're not going to heaven themselves, and they will prevent those who are seeking truth by giving them lies and leading them off into a false direction, another direction other than the truth of Scripture. By itching their ears, speaking onto them smooth things. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, 
and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. And Jesuits love to go after widows to get money for their colleges, which they talk about in depth in the Secreta Monita. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. And that the truth. They are zealous. And these coadjutors just sit back and look at the little devils that they had a hand in making, who are so far more vicious and venomous than themselves even. <laughs> if you can imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Think about that. Think about that. Roll that around in your head a little bit. Ye fools and blind, for where there is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing, but whosoever shall sweareth, but whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. And whoso shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anus and cumin and have omitted the weight here matters of the law. Judgment! Isn't that interesting? That's the first thing that's mentioned. Because the Pharisees of today, you know, the Catholics and the church building people goers, you know, those people have a real problem with judgment. Self-judgment of themselves specifically, but also telling the sinner of their sins. And they'll quote you, Matthew 7, verse 1 to death. And talk about, oh, you need, I'm your brother, you need to go to me privately. Yeah. Judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, which strain in a gnat and swallow a camel. Go after the little thing, but yet believe in the biggest lie possible. <laughs> Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye may clean the outside of the cup and platter. But within, they are full of extortion and excess. Oh yes, the religion of today is um, adornment for the flesh. Well-ordered flesh. But see, on the inside, your outside looks good. But what are you like on the inside there, <laughs> dear friend? Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. See, and that's, that's what it's all about. That's what Catholicism and the church building people of today are all about. Cleaning the outside. But the inside 
they leave undone. And counting on the outside to clean the inside when it's the other way around, see. Thou blind Pharisees, cleanse that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres. Oh, white and bright, look so good, which indeed appear beautiful outward. Oh, you're so meek, humble, with your soft-spoken voice, yes. But are within, but are within, full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto, unto men, don't you? But within, ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents. Ye generation of vipers. <laughs> How can ye escape the damnation of hell? How can you? Because hmm? within, you're dead. On the outside, yeah, you look real nice, don't you? But on the inside, you're dead. Your heart's hardened. You poor, miserable, unregenerate, unrepentant murderer. Liar. You poor thing. How can you escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets, and wise men, and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues, and persecute them from city to city, to follow you. <laughs> I'm sure Brother Brian Denlinger will be able to testify to that. <laughs> that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Berchias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings? Ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. So, There is a religion of this world. And there is a religion from our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And amen. Amen. When people bash religion, I say amen. Yeah, amen. Because the religion that these people are talking about 
nothing of the religion that is mentioned within the scriptures. No. The religion that these lost people are talking about in comments and whatnot, about how religion is a fraud and all, you're right. But which, which are you referring to? You're referring to the religion as described in Matthew chapter 23. Not the, re the religion that is described in 1 Corinthians 13, Romans chapter 12, Isaiah chapter 58. We need to have a war against religion, brethren. And how do we wage that war? By our living example. Not being afraid to speak up when you ought to. Lord will orchestrate, uh, orchestrate conditions to where he may use you. You're not afraid to follow, are you? Because remember, dear friend, after the church of the living God is redeemed, there's going to be a one world religion. And it's going to be that of Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. It's going to be radical Roman Catholicism. Let us wage this war against religion. Let us ever be mindful of the truth of the scriptures and search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Examine yourselves. Prove your own selves whether you are in the faith or not. Remember, we don't have men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Live according to the scriptures. Not just with eye service when other people are looking, but when it's just you and the Lord. Ah, see. A lot of people can walk outside their door and live one way. Kind of like they won't behave a certain way when they're in church. Guess what? We, the church of the living God, are in church 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Why is that? Because we are the church of the living God. It's the people, not the building. Are you living the scriptures when no one's looking? Rather, when it's just you and the Lord and your help meet, if, if be the case? Because remember, brethren, remember, so the last times. These are the last days before the catching away. Okay? Things are going to get worse. How we live in these last days is crucial. Not just before men for them to see, but also in truth when no one else sees but just the Lord. You don't want to be a hypocrite, do you? I don't. What about you? So. That is going to be it for this video. Okay? Um, thank you for watching this if you do. Um, hopefully, hopefully, uh, the Lord be uh, magnified through this video. Hopefully this may help person or two and just thank you so much to all of you for your prayers your mercy your charity we we never forget any of you so that's going to be it going to get this uploaded it is just about three o'clock my time so thank you so much brothers and sisters of the church of living love you.
and we will see you in the next video.